This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to look at some viewer mail that was sent in. And I want to start out with this book, which is quite exceptional. This comes to us from a gentleman named Roman Dijon. He lives in Germany. This is a book called Sept. And if you can see it here, it's got a cloth cover. Sept is embossed in here. Uh, Roman sent me a letter. I'm going to share some of this with you. And I got an email from him as well with a lot of information and a lot of backstory on this. And so Sept is a conceptual work. It is a collection of black and white portraits that were all shot specifically for this book as a project. What's interesting is it shows different characters in a pretty extraordinary setting. This was all done over a 14-month period. We have different models that are photographed in the same location, which was an old abandoned garden shed. And I love the lighting in here. I think it, it has a really interesting effect. And I love the fact that we have different characters that kind of come in and out of this. And so it's not a theme and variations per se, but it, it's interesting that we have the consistency of setting um, and what changes in the variant ends up being the people that are shot. Also important to note is Roman talks about how music plays a really important role in this work. And so if you get the book, uh, you're going to get this, which comes with a little playlist and you can hit the QR code. It's on Spotify. Uh, it's really cool and it's very fitting of the kind of photography that we have in here. I'm going to share a little bit of his letter, which reads, Dear Ted, I am Roman Dijon, a German photographer and coach who is doing portrait work, specifically artist portrait work, since 2012. Since the beginning, I am in love with natural light, so nearly all of my photos were shot in available light and aperture wide open, mostly an 85mm 1.4 Sony G Master. I'm focused on the human in front of the camera and try to create and build a setting which reflects the atmosphere and the character of the model. Music plays an important role in my work. I do personalized playlists for every shoot, which should support the model to express themselves and find the perfect mood. I see myself as the director, who just has the task of finding the best cast, the best spot stage, brief the model, emotionalize the model, and finally give the person the freedom to be whatever they want. The stage is yours. Sept is my first book. All in all, a very personal project for me because with this book, I am processing my experiences from time and projecting them into the pictures and models, merging them with my pictorial style. Sept is my most personal work of the last 11 years, a book full of darkness and light. It combines and hides many small surprises and hidden objects obvious things apparently only noticed upon repeat viewing and leaves even for me question marks. So a couple observations that I want to make and things that I really like about this. First of all, I love the way that he does portraits in here. Uh, there's a lot of dramatic influence. Uh, it's almost like a performance art in some ways. It's not very conventional in terms of shooting portraits in black and white, obviously. The lighting is very moody. I love the effect of the garden shed has. I like the fact that you don't notice uh, in other words, it's just not in your face that all these were shot in the same location. It's more of a subtlety. Uh, the musical component certainly adds a lot to this. And I think probably my favorite part about Roman's work is this is one of the things that I love the most about photography when it works really well is that he gets right up on that line between abstraction and reality in terms of the way he's rendering a subject. There are pictures in here that you see where it kind of you're taken back and what is it that I'm looking at and then it becomes obvious. And I love that blurred line of abstraction and reality that's done not with just focus techniques or blurry photos per se or motion. It's done with just a really subtle use of composition and the way he uses shape and line and figures. And uh, this is really well done. Roman, this is absolutely outstanding. Um, I wish that you guys could see this in person. And if you are interested and you want to get a copy of this, I'll put a link to Roman as well as all the other people that I'm talking about in this video in the show description below. So make sure you check it out. Uh, the printing on this is absolutely first class. And this is something that's really difficult to do when you start dealing with a lot of really low end dark tones is that they can get muddy. And this book is not. It's really well done. It's not very conventional in terms of like a blurb quality or something where people are doing one offs or shorter runs. It's really well done. And that probably doesn't pick up as much in a video that I'm going to end up putting on the Internet. But anyway, Roman, outstanding job. You guys should check this out. It is clearly um, <laughs> very different and I think quite amazing. So check out the link in the show description. Roman, thank you for sending this is awesome. All right, so we're going to move from large format black and white to this smaller color work that came in. And I am a big fan of small works like this. And I'm going to talk about this as we go through. This comes to us from a photographer by the name of Maurice Cunningham. This is called Credo. Maurice includes a postcard which reads, Dear Ted, I just wanted to say 
that I'm a huge fan of the show. Thank you for your unique perspective and for inspiring a generation. I made this zine using a collection of photos shot on my iPhone 4S and 6 Plus over the course of six years. Nothing special, but I hope you enjoy it, Maurice. So a couple observations in here. I think the color in here is really well done. And if he hadn't told me this was all done on phones, I would not have guessed. He's changed the crop away from the native aspect ratio, but uh, they're really well done and they're very cool. The work is some street photography. There's some architectural stuff in here. What I love about this is the pacing in here, and you're going to see how he does layout um, um, on various spreads in here, and sometimes we're including multiple images. These start to get really small in this format, and I think this is one of the things that's so cool about it. And I've said this over and over again over the years doing this, these videos, is that one of the things that really attracts me to smaller work is that when it's successful as a way of drawing you in, it makes you want to look closer. There's something that you're looking at to see in here. And on a spread like this, we're getting really small. In fact, these are really thumbnail sized, but the reason they work well is that Maurice has a really good compositional sense and that they still read at that size. And I also love the fact that this is just a complete departure. You know, it, the trend in photography these days tends to be, at least on the digital side of things, is high resolution. You know, how many megapixels can we fit into a sensor? And I love the fact that these were done with something simple just two different phones and there was a collection done over a period of time but I love the fact that that is not the emphasis here it's not zooming in and admiring details that were taken by a lens and a camera combination it's more like enjoying the composition and the vision from the photographer anyway Maurice excellent work this is really nicely done I'll link up to his Instagram and if you want to copy this I'll link it up in the show description below thank you for sending got a couple more that I want to share with you I love the graphic on this this is called waiting for the rain and I have another one that is a study of a neighborhood called Hampton Heights in South Carolina but first real quick I want to give a shout out to our sponsor today who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace how easy is it to build an amazing website in a matter of minutes Squarespace has you covered. It's dead simple. Head over to Squarespace, hit get started. You can start by selecting from an impressive collection of customizable templates, or you can do what I do, build your own. Something unique because, you know, you're not like other websites. Give your site a name. Next, you can build your homepage. We'll start with a few preset layouts just to get us going. Want to sell products like books or prints? Well, you can feature those on your homepage. Create a few more sections if you want. Let's also give it a color palette. There's a whole bunch to choose from. And just get us started. We can change this all later. Next, let's select the typography choices. Welcome to your website. Everything is set up and it's all ready for you to customize. Squarespace is built on Fluid Engine, the next generation of website design. Select Edit and Fluid Engine allows you to drag, place, and resize any element on the page. You can snap these to a grid, you can make them float on top of one another, you can freeform however you like. You can even preview and adjust how the site looks on either desktop or mobile. The layouts are independent. Of course, you'll want a portfolio for your work. Creating an image gallery is as easy as dropping a folder of images on your web browser. Once uploaded, you can drag to resort, customize the look, and Squarespace writes all of the code for you. Everything just works and it looks fabulous. Want to sell your own prints, books, or zines? Squarespace has the capabilities to not only set up your online store and collect payments, but they also give you all the tools that you're gonna to need to be successful. Managing shipping and payment options, manage your orders and engage with your customers. They even give you the tax tools that you need to keep things organized and stay compliant. You should try Squarespace for yourself. It's absolutely free, no credit card required. Just go to squarespace.com AOP Sign up for that free trial. If you decide Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your order by using offer code AOP on checkout. That's right, the code is AOP. So stop procrastinating, go build your website today. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, so next up is this book that comes to us from Phoenix, Canada. This is called Waiting for Rain. I actually really love this. This is a little conceptual work uh, that's divided into four seasons. I'm going to read you a little bit of the note that he included. And by the way, his handwriting is quite awesome. It reads, Hi, Ted. I'm Phoenix, Canada, a photographer based in Northern California. Thank you for the resources, advice, and everything else you provide with your YouTube channel. I'm a huge fan. In this package is my latest photo book, Waiting for the Rain. For the past two years, I've been documenting this region and its ever-changing landscapes, with each chapter being a season. My written word felt necessary to add an extra layer of observation and feelings towards those seasonal changes. 
After almost 10 years of making photos, this project feels like my most cohesive body of work yet. May this book help preserve the natural beauty of this place I call home. So a couple things that I want to say about this. Phoenix, you've done an excellent job with this. It is a very cohesive body of work, and I love the fact that the written word here is expressed in poetry. I think it really works. It's, it fits well together. The other thing that I want to commend you on is I too live in a landscape that's full of trees that most of the year don't have a lot of leaves on them, and they're hard to shoot, and I think you've done an exceptionally good job compositionally. This is one of my favorites in here. Really cool use of geometry and subframing. Another thing I love is Phoenix works really well with layers in a lot of these compositions, which is really cool. The other thing that's worth noting is note the cross in here, which is also echoed earlier in the book with uh, this image here. It's also in this broken tree in a literal form on the side of a tree and possibly unintended, but uh, also appears here in this landscape image. Some thematic symbolism that is carried throughout. The other thing that I love about this is it's pretty consistently, obviously, black and white all the way through, but the, the moods that are changed between the seasons are really brought out here. Uh, this is a really awesome work, Phoenix. I really like this a lot. I think it's very successful in your approach and what you're trying to do here. Congratulations, you should be very proud of this one. All right, so next up is this little zine. This comes to us from Zach Parks. This is called Sidewalks and Window Panes, Volume 1, Hampton Heights. Zach also includes a little note which reads, Hi, Ted, please enjoy this copy of my latest zine, Sidewalks and Window Panes. I'm a longtime fan of the channel. Just a little way of saying thanks for all that you do for the photography community. Cheers, Zach. Sidewalks and window panes is very cool. This is sort of, uh, reminds me a lot of William Eggleston in its approach. Uh, some of these are kind of deadpan. I love the fact that it's a study of a neighborhood. And then we get the slight interruption from here to there with an upside down shopping cart. We get cars in the way. I think this is actually very quirky and very cool in a lot of ways. This actually reminds me of something I heard Keith Carter talk about in a workshop one time. And he was saying, you know, if you want the ultimate challenge for yourself as a photographer, go out and take 12 photos, 13 if you're really feeling adventurous, but do it all within half a mile of your house in a small radius. And you're forced to compose, for better or worse, what is there. And I actually love that. And it reminds me of that because that is what this collection is. There's only a couple little critical observations that I want to make on this. And I think it just comes down to the pacing. And this is something that's kind of common with a lot of things. And I think that as a photographer, you're looking at your work as a collection. And how is that paced as you move through? And let me give you an example here of what I'm talking about. So on this spread, you have the same house. And it's photographed in two different seasons. And I like the seasonal approach because we see some snow stuff towards the the end of the book. And so one thing to think about is I'm not a big fan of doubling up unless there's a reason to do it necessarily. And I think the reason needs to be a little stronger than just this is the same place in two different seasons because it's not even quite the same field of view that we're dealing with. But I like the idea. But how is that paced a little bit differently and how can you express that in something that's a little bit different? The other thing that made me think of something is you have this uh, another similar spread where you have two cars that's essentially the same composition. It's also the same house in the background. And what I like about this is that it starts showing a breakup in the subject matter. In other words, the car is the emphasis and not necessarily the house because a lot of these are neighborhood shots. And I think that's something that could probably be just changed in the pacing of this because a lot of times you're turning the page and you kind of expect you're going to see another house uh, in some way, shape, or form. And so that may be a way of breaking that up a little bit. I don't know. But I think you've got some possibilities here in terms of the way this is paced. I think it's pretty good as it is, but there's just a couple spots where it's maybe not as obvious to the viewer and either that needs accompanying text in some way, shape, or form, or a title, or it just needs a different type of pacing. But I think this is a really awesome start, and you should be proud of this. Um, it's very cool, and like I said, it reminds me a lot of William Eggleston, who I'm a huge fan of. So awesome work, my man. This is good. So some great stuff today. I want to thank everybody who sent stuff in. Make sure you support your fellow photographers and check out their websites below and uh, buy some books, man. These There's some really good work here. Outstanding job. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.